if anything, it's going to be new beer. So if you like new beer, you want to try new beer, uh, come to Grand on Wednesday, and there's going to be a new beer for you to try. Oh, that's cool. Absolutely. It's a good opportunity to feature one-offs, exclusive releases, Mm -hmm. um, launch parties. You know, if a new beer is coming out for the first time or for the season, um, a lot of the times I ask that they they bring it up and we we release it maybe a little bit early or or that day and and celebrate. Oh, that's awesome. Absolutely. So I want to start, I want to go, I want to touch on where you started from. Um, Getting the job, um, so before you became uh, Cicerone, yeah, uh, you were the restaurant manager. Yeah, supervisor. Yeah. Okay, yeah. restaurant supervisor. Um, and like, what got you into like the industry? Well, I've been I've been in the industry since I was sixteen. Oh wow! Uh, yeah, I've been. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> hey. Hey. Yeah, seat at this table. That's it. <laughs> it's like the, all of us. Yeah, it's yeah, perfect. I've done it all, man. I've, I've been a waiter, line cook, bartender, busboy, dishwasher, yeah. manager. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, I've done it all. So um, I started with Gold Key at the oceanfront at the ocean beach club okay Mm -hmm. and then um there was an opportunity here uh or here at grand is what i mean um and uh do you remember adriana yeah yeah she was she was the manager there and one of her really good friends grant was my manager at the ocean beach club okay so when i interviewed with adriana i kind of had an in you know as with a mutual friend right so uh she gave me a shot as a supervisor up there Mm -hmm. and then that's how i started at grand is really as a supervisor um, Stefan Stockwell was our first Cicerone. Um, he's been in the industry a long time. He's a rock star. Um, he really knows his stuff. Um, he started the program, and there there was uh, just kind of some turmoil, you know, with with people coming in and out of the position. So for a while there, my uh, my general manager Ryan was sort of taking the role on himself, and uh, him and I worked really close together, and so. Uh, Anything that he did, I, I tried to assist on, and, and beer buying and doing the beer menu was, was a big part of that. So for a few months there, um, kind of people were coming in and out of the position. No, nobody was really solid. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, you know, I thought, man, maybe uh, maybe I could do it. Mm-hmm. So uh, I started studying and uh, took the test for the certified beer server, the level one uh, Cicerone certification. So after I took that, it kind of showed it showed I had initiative and drive to want to learn learn more about it. Mm-hmm. And as I worked closer with my boss, I sort of started to see things, and him and I started talking, bouncing ideas off of each other. And he finally got to a point where he felt like you know he could trust me with the program. Mm-hmm. Um, and so having passed down the program onto me, I sort of picked it up and have been going my own direction with it. Oh, nice! Yeah. That's awesome. Absolutely, that's cool. That's so cool, like uh, creative freedom to kind of craft and you know mold that 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 program yeah. into into your own personal thing mm-hmm. yeah it's like your your own footprint yeah right. <clears throat> i think uh, i think we all kind of do that you know when we go to uh, the different places and bars and restaurants that we work yeah in, there's like there there's a, a bit of responsibility that's bestowed on us as bartenders or servers or managers you know leads you know um with setting up like standards and setting up programs um that help you know generate business and help yeah. mm-hmm. you know keep people in there and mm-hmm. help return guests and help return customers absolutely um so it's super cool man to hear that because i i like to I like to craft i would think of ideas like all the time you know what i'm saying oh yeah and it's like one thing to think of an idea it's another thing to be able to take that idea and implement it you know what i'm saying there's something that mm-hmm. not only works um for a model that you see but a model that your ownership sees so much yeah. you know what i mean that also works with like your associates also mm-hmm. um and you know just kind of you're just crafting something out of nothing. I think that's cool too. The way you said it was like you, you know, the you know people kind of going in and out of that position, but you kind of created the the you know the trust and uh, you know basically proved yourself to them to say yeah. like this is this is my position. I can exactly. do this. Yeah, exactly. Which is better than just you know filling out a resume or application and talking talking game. Right. You actually did something. No, yeah, absolutely. which is cool. Thank you. Mm-hmm. No, it's been it's been great because. The first year I was there, I was just observing, you know, just supervising, just watching, and that's what I—that's something I love to do. I love to to watch, observe, and, and learn, and yeah, I have access to the the numbers really and the, yeah. and the data. And when I start looking at that, I can see, you know, what beers are selling, what beers right. are not selling, where, you know, what, uh, you know, what what did we take a chance on that maybe we shouldn't have, or, right. mm-hmm. or what's something in the future that we can take a chance on. Well, and, speaking of what you were talking about earlier, which is great, and it's, yeah. it's cool that you know these numbers. Like we're, we're talking about the 
the the hard seltzers. Yeah. And then what you can yeah. do with it, <laughs> what you can do with yeah. a, a, a half keg of White Claw. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. So Jan- January second of this year, the uh, the White Claw <clears throat> guy came up to visit me and you know to, to sell me some White Claw. Mm. I was like, man. Right. I don't know. Right. All of us. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't know. We were all in that boat. <laughs> we tried, we White tried Claw. This, yeah. We tried the Spike Seltzer. We tried the Bon and Vivs. We tried right. the, yeah. uh, Apocalypse Aleworks from Forest Glen, Virginia. He came to me with a uh, Triad mm-hmm. Seltzer. Yeah. And, uh, sounds intense. He was, you know, he was claiming to be the first first mm-hmm. in Virginia to keg hard, uh, hard seltzer. Mm-hmm. And he had to actually put a hot bud in the batch to classify it as beer to get around the ABC because he didn't have the license to brew seltzer. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was really interesting. That's weird. Yeah, so it was classified as beer, okay. but it was a hard seltzer. Mm-hmm. It had one hot butt in it, so... How does that work? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just like, oh, whoa, 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 don't, don't close it yet, and drop. Well, it's there the, we go. It's the, <laughs> it's the non-smoking room in the dive bars in Virginia. Do you know what I mean? Where not, yeah. yeah, you have to have a non-smoking area, and it's just the closet right there. Yeah. Oh, okay, like next to footers. Yeah, what, exactly. what is that bar? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah they have like a four by four room mm-hmm. that you can smoke in. That's in the yeah. restaurant. It's oh, closed wow. off, Ches and then place. that way they're like, oh yeah, no, that's that's the smoking yeah. section. Yeah. Okay. Uh, little loopholes. Yeah. The, the bud in the water. Yeah. Gotta get so, creative. I mean, we, <laughs> we, tr- we tried it, and it didn't. It, it wasn't sticking. So yeah. The beginning of this year, I was like, mm. Nah, it's that's not not happening. Right. And time went on, and uh, from May, June, I was thinking, man, this stuff's really heating up. Yeah. Like, it really is. I, was like, I think we could do a, like a patio party. Get these guys to come in. Either they brought a big ice sculpture, filled it with white claw, were giving out T-shirts, <laughs> taking pictures. I was like, "Man, this is, this is cool." We sold, mm-hmm. I think, eight cases that first four days, mm-hmm. and a hundred dollars a case profit. That's nuts! Jeez. Absolutely unreal. Yeah. Well, yeah. what's great is, I mean, so when it first came out, you know, it was very not to sound sexist, but women were drinking it. Yeah. Man, yeah. you're like, eh. Now you've got Leonidas looking dudes <laughs> drinking it by the yeah, case. Absolutely. Yeah. Dude, it was um the I think the episode of when we had uh, Aaron Rachel here, uh, yeah. the fourth episode. We were yeah. I was talking about this. Remember this? It was like um I was standing at Calypso and the bartender's like, It's a chick. And oh, she's okay. like, Well what can I get you? And I'm like, Oh, like I'm gonna have a I'm like, Do you have truly? And she's like Oh yeah, definitely. And like the guy next to me looks at me like yeah. truly, and I'm like, I'm gonna fuck this thing. Is, it's delicious, it's delicious and light. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't care what you think, guy. I I, mm. I feel and look pretty now. Fuck you. <laughs> Where's the curly straw? Yeah. <laughs> Take us over ice, please. Yeah, but no. I mean, White Claw and truly, you know, White Claw being, I would imagine, like the lead, uh, the industry leader currently, mm-hmm. at least from yeah. like the marketing that I've seen, mm-hmm. and like social media is like just time taking it, and run, I mean the, the White Claw guy, you know, they've got the sayings that are out there now, ain't no laws and claws, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. Right. Ain't, ain't no laws <laughs> if you're drinking claws, post that. ain't no laws if you're drinking claws, <laughs> yeah, um, you know, but you know, as funny as it is, it's like this like viral thing, but you know, they don't taste bad they taste good like yeah. i fuck with it yeah you know for fourth of july I, I was talking um recently to the white claw guy <laughs> they like outsold bud light on the fourth of july well, well, that's wild but i believe in the united, that. In Could... the united states they outsold bud light in on the fourth of july white claw wow. i'm not fucking with you seriously 100 wow. percent. that's wild the most american tradition that we have <laughs> <laughs> fucking nfl <laughs> is gonna be sponsored by white yes yeah, yeah. i can't wait to see it i oh, mean it's, man you know what i'm saying like that's that's, that's, that's huge yeah that's huge you know mm-hmm. um and this is like now i mean fuck we've talked about now the hard seltzers for i believe three different times when we were we <laughs> yeah had, i was about to say that yeah you know like now yep uh with rachel mm-hmm. with patrick collins yep and I'm sure speckled in there has been just brought up at least for a, a second. little dusting here. Yeah. A little, little, little white claw <laughs> dust. Yeah, yeah. White claw, if you're out there, yeah, just listen. We're looking for you guys. Let me know if you want to do some business. <laughs> We're down to down to reps and white claw. <laughs> Absolutely. I definitely think they're poised to be the Red Bull 
Oh of, yeah, of Horn Seltzer. Oh yeah, like yeah. That name White Claw. That's mm-hmm. that's the one. Mm-hmm. But we've decided. <laughs> we've, <laughs> all, we've all decided. Yeah, Truly's the monster. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> the, the, the Pepsi. Yeah. <laughs> the Pepsi. <laughs> the Pepsi. Ooh, yeah, the Pepsi. Burn. That's so good. <laughs> that's okay. Yeah, that's There's all right. a place for it. People like Pepsi. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, some people I mean, like Pepsi. I, I don't hang out with Pepsi drinkers. But. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. I'm no. sorry. Is it White Claw or Truly? Oh, I'll have a Truly. Oh, you can get the fuck out of here. See, Truly's doing draft, though. Yeah. So, Truly's doing draft. So I think they might squeeze in, yeah. you know, to some, some cocktails... You know, some, yeah, 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 and that—that's an. E- we were talking about that outside. Like yeah. that, that's an easy thing to do. Absolutely. Like you said, I mean, pour nine ounces, add some cranberry, some grapefruit, ice. whatever, crushed yeah. ice in this town. Fuck, yeah. you go fuck it? yourself. Yeah. Everyone's drinking that, right? <laughs> you know, what what you I mean? use it for like club soda mm-hmm. instead of exactly. That what that's what we were saying. So like, so instead of having like a vodka soda splash of crayon, you could have like a have a vodka truly splash of crayon. That sounds dangerous as fuck. Oh yeah, you're welcome, truly. <laughs> oh, yeah. That is dangerous. Though. You could have a whole cocktail menu based on it. And you could printing money at that point. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah, I think w- what we were talking about earlier. I think it was a 14 ounce pour mm-hmm. of truly on draft for a half barrel, half keg. You're making 1,100 bucks at 14 ounces. Yeah, 14 ounces. Right. So you add ice. You bring that down nine ounces, ten right. ounces. Mm-hmm. You're just Making a kill. So as an operator, you're going to be killing the game. Absolutely. So yeah. all the operators, operators listening out there, you're also welcome. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do you What do you think the next trend is going to be for beers? Because I mean, we're we're in the seltzer trend, but it's also summer. So fall's coming soon, right? Yeah. yeah. And then we got fucking you know moving into the next part, which is like the winter, the colder months where oh, things yeah. start to get a little heavier. Not a only maltier. not only ourselves. <laughs> but also the food that we eat and things that we drink too, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So what do you what do you think the next trend is? You know, what do you what do you what do you feel? What do you see? What the, what, is, what does the market tell you? Well, the next uh, next seasonal trend is definitely going to be porters and stouts for sure. Okay. Mm-hmm. Getting into the next mm-hmm. season, but uh, ciders are up and coming too. Oh really? I mean, there's a lot a lot of new cider coming out. A lot of new cider, and in September, October, you're gonna see you're gonna see a lot more. Mm-hmm. And they're getting really creative with the cider too. We've got what a watermelon rosemary, I've mm-hmm. seen mm-hmm. blackberry mint, I've seen ginger, jalapeno lime. I mean, this. I mean, damn. Oh yeah, cider is is taking off. I feel like that. Um, so we we're kind of talking about this earlier. Where, you know, where where the direction of beer is going compared to you know sales of spirits and wine and these hard seltzers, um, with the millennials now drinking they're going for that like sweet like so they're going for like the ciders yeah, and, the, the and then the free. gluten free yep. and then like the the canned or the canned uh cocktail essentially yeah yeah this is like the they're they're stepping away from like what you know what i'm used to with the with the beer whether it be craft beer import beers belgians and they're going into like yeah like the healthier and sweeter side of yeah, things the more, more like. fun really i think yeah yeah, yeah. i think we're not really that people people making this stuff, brewers, distillers, all these guys have pushed the envelope so far now that mm-hmm. we're not we don't have to settle for nasty stuff or bitter mm-hmm. stuff or, right. or bland or now we have options. We can yeah. try something new and exciting. We mm-hmm. can try a marshmallow IPA if we want right. or a, <laughs> yeah. you know, a right. Sunday smoothie, mm-hmm. you know, IPA, what, whatever it is, s'mores, a s'more stout or there's just so many options now that we don't have to settle for yeah. you know, the old stuff. Right. Yeah. There was a there was an article I was reading the other day. It was it started off that um, <clears throat> these these high you know high ABV um, high ABV uh, sweet stouts and then all these like new um, hazy IPAs are ruining craft beer and all that stuff and just ruining the whole genre. So there was a couple there's a couple like yeah critics basically. Yeah. But the guy starts off that way and then he, and then I'm like oh, okay I see what he's doing here. So he was agreeing but at the end, like once he gets halfway through he's like. Those people that wrote those articles is all bullshit. Yeah, it's yeah. like y'all are just stuck in this old world. You know what I mean? And you want everything to taste exactly the way it's supposed to taste, and like uh, everything to absolutely. be exactly how it was supposed to be. But that's not what we're doing. We're 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 being creative and we're moving forward. Yeah, you know, and being progressive with yeah. this, this movement. Yeah, I mean that's what our generation is known for. It's mm-hmm. being way out there stepping outside the box doing whatever we want yeah exactly like it <laughs> yep. or, or don't we're yeah. not gonna apologize for it either yeah, throw, exactly. throw some steak in there fuck it let's try it <laughs> <laughs> throw some fucking the steak the potato in there. chip IPA steak stout motherfuckers <laughs> steak stout <laughs> how you want it medium rare got it <laughs> <laughs> different temperatures 12, for the beer 12% <laughs> 
Throw some sprinkles on it. Sweet <laughs> perfumes. No, that's all. I mean, but th- that's the truth, though. That's like you look at these, you know, these older beers like Franz Gunner and stuff like that, which oh, yeah. is cool. They're, you know, they're traditional and stuff like that, but eventually it's not going to, that market's going to go away. Yeah. That which, market is disappearing. Yeah. They're getting older and, you know, they're just, get, they're starting it's to fade. Yeah, exactly. It's they fading. start to fade away. Yeah. 